You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me on this Motivation and Mindset Monday, where I hope that this show will help you, will help me, will help your friends and family to really go on and have our best week yet. Because remember, it's not about having our best year, our best decade, or any of those things. It starts really with one day at a time. I mean, that's honestly what it's all about. We always have these lofty goals for ourselves or these expectations but we see them outside of us. We see them in the future. And the problem is when it's always in the future, when we're always living in the future, we're not able to take care of today. We're not able to take care of this moment in time. And that's really all there is. Because as we're looking towards the future, we're guessing, trying to figure out how to get there when the truth is, if we start to live this moment, moment by moment, doing the right action at the right time, which is right now, that's how we move along in our trajectory. And again, nothing happens overnight. But one of the issues that comes along and this is something that's come up quite a bit, so I do need to address it today, is that we really have mixed emotions in life. We're reading the self-help books, so self-improvement, we're listening to the podcasts, and we're always hearing about you know, the secret, a law of attraction, or we're hearing about like we need to become more zen. We need to become more kind of passive, that we need to just kind of look at our surroundings and not necessarily react. That part of becoming this zen-like state or becoming enlightened or aware is that we let more things go in life. But I want to tell you right now that that is not anywhere near the first step you must take in order to reach that higher state of vibration, to reach that higher state of energy. And I'll tell you why. You absolutely have to move up the ladder of emotions in order to reach that highest level state that you want to achieve, which would be the enlightenment, which would be the awareness, the bliss, all of those things that come along with it. Now, remember, awareness is a little bit different. Awareness is simply understanding where you're at right now in this moment. So my goal is always about creating awareness. I want people to understand if they're in a good spot right now, a bad spot right now, neutral, which almost never happens, right? Because we're always kind of teetering back and forth. But as you become more aware, it doesn't mean you need to change at that very moment, but you are at least now conscious of what you are thinking. And then when you become more conscious of it, then you can start to take the action to either reinforce your current state, which if you're not in a good place, hopefully you're not going to take that action. You're actually so aware that you're going to take then a different action, which I'm going to talk about today, to move you into a better state. So what am I saying then? If you're not supposed to directly move from where you are right now to this state of enlightenment or bliss or just complete happiness all the time, right? Well, it's becoming aware enough to understand that you've been dealing with suffering on and off from this, maybe this years of feeling sad or low mood or maybe weak or overwhelmed or you just kind of feel like you're not in control or maybe there's this apathy. It's just kind of like you don't even feel anything anymore or this this low-level depression, which is just kind of like nothing really gets you jazzed up anymore. You don't get excited about life. You don't have the same passion that you used to. And so what I'm saying is the anxiety, the sadness, the weakness, the apathy, the lack of passion, you can't just jump from that state to that state of always being happy. And the reason why I'm saying this is not to get you down, but it's to let you know that you're human. If you haven't been able that no matter how hard you've tried to just to get that happiness to stick, it's not your fault. Like it's not because you've been told that you should be in this state, that you should be walking around happy, that you should be just zen all the time, always balanced, always even. But that's just not the truth. And that's because just like I've spoken about with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you can't just jump from the first stage to the last stage. It doesn't happen. And so when I'm talking about going through the certain levels of emotions, which I'm going to go through all the different levels of emotion one day, but I want to tell you this, that if you're in a low mood, 
a apathetic based state, a feeling of you feel weak or you feel just kind of sad or there's not a lot of passion, there's no energy, there's no zest, no vitality. Well, you can't buzz at a higher vibration. Your vibration, which again, you can call it vibration, you can call that woo-woo, whatever it is, just keep in mind that our bodies are literally atoms and quirks and vibrating molecules. So there's a lot of quantum physics and science behind this. But what I'll just say is like, think of it as the level of energy that you're moving at, okay? That means mind and body. That's your entire energy being, and that is you. You are an energy being. So what happens, though, in an apathetic state, in a depressed state, think about it. Your whole body is depressed. Your vibration is depressed. That means it's low. So you have to think about it. How can you get the, through this highest state? Well, you need to climb the ladder, meaning that you, you can't go from being an infant to sprinting around a track, right? That doesn't happen. You need to work your way up the ladder. Now, of course, it's not going to take you as long as an infant would to go from just sitting there or even not even be able to sit up to then crawling to then walking and then to being able to run and then sprint. Okay, you don't have to take that long. But what I am saying and the analogy that I'm making is that you can't go from a low vibrational state to a high vibrational state overnight. What has to happen is this, is I want you to look at it this, is that what we need to do sometimes, and again, this, not a lot of people are talking about this, but I honestly have seen it work over and over in my practice. Since I've seen it work over and over in the real world with real people, I want to share it with you because maybe it has some value for you. And again, this isn't politically correct. So keep in mind, the Cabral concept is not always going to go with the mainstream. It's not always going to be politically correct, but I am always going to give you the truth. And I am always going to give you what I've seen work in my practice and also which I can verify through these different hierarchy of emotions as well. So here's the thing. If you're at that low vibrational state, apathetic, sad, feeling a little weak, feeling a little like not in control, you're overwhelmed, you're depressed. What I want you to do in order to move to that next level is get a little fed up, get a little bit angry at your current state. And again, if you looked at all the gurus out there, which I don't disagree with, so I'm going to tell why. They would say, you don't want to feel that anger. You don't want to feel that. What I'm saying is, I don't want you to feel hate. I don't want you to feel angry at the world like you're out to get someone. What I want you to feel is not happy, not willing to live like you're living right now any longer. So I don't want you necessarily to, anger might be the wrong word, but I want you to get fed up with this. That you have to say to yourself, I can no longer live like this. I no longer want to be this person who's thinking this way and acting this way and holding on to these thoughts. That's not who I want to be. That's not what I've envisioned my life to be. And that's not the life that I'm going to live. It's also not the role model that I want to be for my, my partner, for my parents, for my siblings, for my children, for my community at large, okay? That's not who I want to be. And once you decide that something changes, when you start to talk with yourself that way, because it's all about self-talk, and when you start to get a little fed up and you tell yourself that, things start to change because now you are no longer this weak or meek-based individual who's given into your thoughts and saying and reinforcing that with more apathetic-based thoughts, okay? You are now someone who's saying, I'm willing to stand up for what I believe in. And that means I'm also willing to stand against those things that I do not want in this life. Too many people believe that they need to just play the hand that they were dealt with. And yes, you do temporarily, but remember, you're the one that has the cards. Now, we don't get to change the entire world around us, but we do get to actually start to create our own reality, which means once we clean up the life that we're currently living and we start to rebalance that from both mind and body, and there's a lot that goes into that, so I'm not downplaying it, but then we get to start to create our own life. First, we start to, as I've said before, become the person who thinks the thoughts that does then do the actions that then gets to get the life that they want, the be, do, get. I've talked about that many, many times on Motivation and Mindset Mondays. But I have to tell you this, is that I need you no matter, again, we all come from different backgrounds. Some people are brought up, and let's just say they're, they're brought up and they're very wealthy, so they maybe they're given certain privileges. But at the same time, they also get things taken away from them. Like if you're always given things because you might have been brought up with a lot of privileges, you're given the ability to have to like fight for things sometimes. Again, this is, these are just generalizations. This isn't everyone. And then some people 
are brought up with nothing, absolutely nothing. And so they have to fight for those things, but then they miss out on a lot of privileges as well. Where I always look at it is you never miss out on anything. You are who you are. This is your own journey. But once you become aware, you understand that you want to make a change in your life. You get fed up with the life that you're currently living. You don't need to take it out on anybody else. You don't need to take it out your dog or your cat. What you need to do is then start to come up with that plan. You say to yourself, this is not the life that I'm going to be leading three months from now, three years from now, and certainly not 30 years from now. What I need to do is start today on thinking new thoughts and activating. So thinking about that plan that I'm going to put into action where I can actually start to change my life. But again, that starts with saying that I no longer accept this current position I am, that I'm in. I no longer accept the health that I have, the body that I have, the relationship that I have, the spirituality that I have, the career that I have, whatever it might be. Those are my big five that I always talk about. When I do this you know, holistic-based coaching, all of those things, that's what I always talk about, okay? And some of the areas might be great and some might not be great, okay? But at some point, you're going to get to a point where you literally can no longer live the life that you're living. And at that point, you need to make a change. And I talked with people that are like this quite a bit because I'll speak with people. You know, We're talking about their overall health. The topic of stress comes up because it's such a big thing with our health or body transformation or anti-aging. And they say, well, I really can't stand the career that I'm in. I thought it was going to be something that I wanted. You know, My parents wanted me to go to graduate school, do all these different things. And it turns out I don't enjoy it. I don't get anything out of it. My job stresses me out. Now I take it out of my family and obviously it hurts my sleep. It's hurting my health. And so for them, and they always ask like, you know, should I make a career switch? Should I do this? Should I do this? I always let people know, you're going to come to a point in your life where it's basically a breaking point where you say, I cannot live this life any longer. And at that point, you need to make a choice, okay? You either need to make the change in the career, make the change in your health, make the change in your body, the relationship, the spirituality, whatever it might be, or... You take your current situation and you look at it with a new set of eyes and you say, okay, this is originally what I did want. This is the partner. This is the family. This is the, you know, spirituality. This is the body, whatever it might be. And you then have to look at it and just reframe it. And you have to say, okay, well, if this is really what I do want, because this is what I want in my life, I now have to say, how do I make it work? Okay. But you can't stay at that low vibrational depressed based state. A state of getting fed up is leading to my next step, which I want for you, which is a step of action. Because once you get fed up, once you decide, I no longer accept this for myself, I'm worth it. I believe I have enough value to change. I believe I have enough value that my personal wants and needs in life should also be met. And I understand that if my own needs are met and I become better, then I become better for everyone else because I'm happier. I live with more passion. I have more energy. Therefore, I can give more to family, friends, community, work, church, all of those things. So always keep in mind, and I will keep stating this, that it is not a selfish act to want to improve your own life because as you improve your own life, everyone that touches you will get improved as well because you will have a different level of energy, which is a higher vibrational uh, level, and you'll just have so much more to give. You'll have more interesting conversations, for one. You'll be able to also help other people out of their lowered state, which is really what we're all talking about, right? We're trying to pay it forward. I was this depressed, anxious, insomniac, perfectionist, OCD, you name it, kid 15 plus years ago. That was me. There was no way out. I had no one to talk to. These things were unknown to me. They were certainly not talked about my family and my parents certainly wouldn't talk about with their parents. I'm just trying to break the cycle now. So my kids, I'm always asking them, hey, what's going on? Let's talk about this. Let's, you know, do these things. And I'm not perfect, but I'm trying my best, which is really all that matters. How did I get out of it? How did I learn? Well, what I'm teaching you right now is simply about two decades of research into the human psyche. It's research into the body as a whole. And understanding that all of these things have been taught throughout the ages, they're just not taught in schools. And that's the unfortunate thing. I really wish there was some real philosophy, some real life truths taught in school. Because when a child comes in that's depressed and anxious or feeling apathetic or weak, and they don't want to turn in their homework, they don't want to even do any work, instead of forcing them to do it, why not ask why? Why is this child like this? What's holding them back? 
Right now, I want you to ask you to yourself, what's holding you back? Really? And, and why are you in the state? And if you can't figure out that's okay, you just have to revolt against it. You have to say, it's not okay for me. I am fed up. And then guess what happens next? That getting fed up now leads to energy because now you're pulling yourself up out of that depressed state. Being fed up literally raises your vibration. Now, is it enlightenment? No, it's not. It's only about halfway up, all right? But you're still, now you're out of that apathetic state. You can't be apathetic and fed up. You can't be. Apathetic means you don't really care. Fed up means that's not acceptable anymore. Now you start to take action because when you're fed up, you have to move away from the thing that you don't want. And to move away from the thing that you don't want means taking action towards something that you do want. That's really what it's all about. So how do you figure out what that is? Well, you then have to start to move towards your why. And there has to be a big enough why, which is simply a reason that moves you out of your current state. Because keep in mind, your current state, although maybe not a happy one, is your comfort zone. Okay? So your current state is actually your comfort zone. And you might say, well, I'm really uncomfortable right now in my comfort zone. And I would agree with you. But it's usually much more uncomfortable for people to actually move out of that comfort zone to the unknown. Because remember, you're moving from this apathetic state, which you are very used to, very accustomed to feeling this just overwhelmed, lower vibrational state. So if you're getting fed up, well, this is new territory for you, okay? And if you're moving then to a higher state of actually taking action, this might be the first time in years you've decided this. That gets uncomfortable. But here's the thing. Always know that in the other side of your comfort zone are your goals. Remember, you'd already be at your goals right now if you were taking the actions needed to achieve them. And you could say to me, well, I'm already doing things like changing my diet or trying to go to the gym or I'm you know, doing counseling or all of these things. And I would say, yes, good. You are taking those actions. Now, we need to either tweak it, keep doing more of it, or begin on another plan. Because sometimes the first plan isn't always the right plan, but the first plan is always the best plan. Because that first plan gets you to start to move, which is really what it's all about. It is literally putting one foot in front of the other, and it is pulling yourself out of that low vibrational state moving forwards to a slightly higher vibrational state, and then after that, walking up the ladder. Good. So you're, you're no longer apathetic. Now you're fed up. You're a little angry. You want to do something about it. You know, you said, I'm not going to live this life anymore. Now you start to take action. You become more aware. You take that first action. You lose a couple pounds if your goal is weight loss. You put on a little bit of muscle if your goal is weight gain. You start to feel a little bit more energetic if you have fatigue-based issues. You have a little bit less joint pain. Now you start to see a little progress. Now you start to get a little bit more happy because you can see your life is in the moving in the right direction. Now your energy level raises a little bit more. Now what do you do? Well, now you have this little tinkering going on in your mind right now, this little vibration that's starting to say, let's do more of this. And then as you start to do a little bit more of this, the vibration raises even higher. Then you start to achieve your goals. You understand that any goal you set for yourself is achievable As you start to reach that point, you then start to help others. As you help others, you begin to lift even higher. This is how we get into the state of enlightenment. Will you ever walk around in perpetual bliss? No, not necessarily. But what you realize is that you are a human living this human experience. You're allowed to experience all of these emotions, whether it's feeling low some days, high some days, and others. But really, when you've achieved it all, when you've gotten to that highest level, you can realize that all the emotions are great to feel, but you at any point in your life can immediately pull yourself right back up to that higher vibrational level where you know that you are this person going through life, this journey, experiencing all of the human emotions and that you have now reached that pinnacle. You have now reached the point where you realize you are the person, you are the creator of your own life. And by knowing that you realize that any goal you set for yourself, you might not achieve it next week, or next month, but you're in the process of creating yourself each and every day. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Cabral Concepts. I really appreciate each and every one of your listens. Please do feel free to share this show with anyone you feel it could help. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. 
You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.